We're here on Petit Manan Island, which is owned by the Fish and Wildlife Service, managed by Maine Coastal Islands National Wildlife Refuge. I am currently a graduate student at the University of Massachusetts, and prior to that, I went to the University of Maine. Um, while I was a student there, I applied for a job as an intern on this island for a summer and I absolutely loved it. Puffin colonies are so rare in the Gulf of Maine, there's so few that are extremely good for puffins, that it's really important that we protect as much of the resource not only on the islands, but surrounding the islands where these birds fish. And as of right now, we don't have a good idea about where these birds are going. We know they go out to sea to forage, but we don't know if they're going a mile or 25 miles. In uh, early 2010, we found out that GPS technology was going to be small enough and battery technology is now light enough to be able to put on birds the size of Atlantic puffins. We're all really familiar with the term climate change and we don't really know how a warming ocean may affect puffins prey which will then in turn affect a puffin. We are kind of tasked with um, providing the information about where our seabirds are foraging so that wind energy developers um, can maybe make better choices about placement of wind facilities. The more we know about where they're foraging now, the more information we can collect on those areas, like what sorts of prey are there, what the temperature profile is of that water column, and that'll help us hopefully make better predictions of possibly where we may need to conserve more property to have new colonies move in the future if it comes to that. If puffins start showing some sort of stress in the southern part of their distribution, we may need to look for islands to our north. We were able to get 20 GPS units this summer as kind of a pilot study to see if this project is going to work, if this will be useful data um, when we get the data back. And the idea is that we capture a puffin and we use tape around the feathers of the back of the puffin to tape these units on to their backs. We're doing this on four islands, four refuge islands in the Gulf of Maine. We're the first ones here to do this. To our south, it's Matinicus Rock and Seal Island. And then we're doing the work here on Petit Manan Island. And our partners in Canada um, on Machaya Seal Island are also helping us with that work. It's a great collaborative project between Fish and Wildlife, National Audubon Society, and the Canadians. The GPS unit itself is not extremely heavy, but the battery packs that power the GPS are pretty heavy. And so the devices that we're putting on puffins um, are approximately 11 and a half or 12 grams, including all of the tape and any other thing that we need to use to waterproof the unit itself. And these units are, are pretty short when they're encased. They're only about 45 millimeters long. So they are a, um, a significant little package to a puffin, but really it's, it's been minimized quite a bit to make sure that it is safe for the puffin. The birds will carry the unit around for about five days and we'll start trying to recapture. These GPS units that we've put on the birds are kind of just above between their wings. And they should be visible from up here. They're pretty obvious, even though they're relatively small, we can see that something is different. Um, normally their backs are really smooth and streamlined, but these units, um, it's kind of a little box. It almost looks like a miniature matchbox. So we're just gonna do that for a little bit here. We have each of our units numbered. Each unit on each island is individual. So we have numbers one through 20. Here on Petit Manan, we have GPSs six through 10. There's colored pieces of tape, and that's just to signify individuals. If we can't see their leg bands, all the birds are banded, but if we can't see those leg bands and we can see the back of the bird, at least this will give us an idea of which bird we're looking at. The trickiest thing is just capturing and being able to recapture the birds. It's a pretty simple trap. The puffin walks down its burrow, pushes this up, and then gets caught inside. that bird at Burrow 90 and Amanda said it was trying to go into Burrow 90. I'm pretty sure that we've caught both birds now at Burrow 90. The bird at 89 is the GPS bird. If you can't recapture a bird, you can't get the data. These are not transmitters, these are data loggers. So every three minutes the unit turns on, it takes five positions, and then it turns back off again getting the bird's location about every three minutes. And the only reason we're limited to five days is because the battery time um, will wear out on these units. 
once they're recaptured, we can just cut the GPS unit out of its waterproofing, recharge it, plug it directly into the computer, and we can save these files as text files, which are really easy to bring into um, any sort of mapping software, or we can actually bring them directly into Google Earth. This is the computer panel, this is the GPS itself. It has a really easy to use on off switch. This unit has actually been on for the past about five days now, so I'm gonna turn it off. Um, we can hook it up to the computer through this small little port here. Anyone could take this unit, plug it into the computer and download the data and look at it in Google Earth, which is really exciting. And it also means that if we have computers out here on the islands that don't have really complex mapping software, if we have Google Earth on them, we can plug it in and immediately, that day that we get the bird back, know where it's been for the last five days. So that'll give us a slightly broken track, but it'll at least give us an idea of where these birds are going, if they're going to the same place day after day, or if different birds are using completely different areas to forage. Because potentially, if there's a hot spot of foraging and that hot spot is consistent every year, then that may warrant some sort of protection or may warrant further investigation by researchers to see what is so special about that area that's different about the surrounding areas that makes puffins go there to find their prey. The Canadians have been studying these birds often for longer than we have, and so there's a lot for us to learn from them and Canada may be where we end up looking for new colony sites um, for some of these birds if we start to see shifts northward with climate change or, or other sort of environmental impacts. In the Gulf of Maine, this is the first time anything as high tech as this has been put on a puffin. Everyone has one thing in common and that is the birds and the safety of the birds and we're all concerned with the seabirds and their productivity and what sort of habitat they require and if we are able to provide that habitat for them. We're really looking forward to having this data and seeing how it can impact the management of seabirds here in the Gulf of Maine.